Hello, we're glad you've joined us for this live webinar, Automating Biopharma Quality Control to Reduce Costs and Improve Compliance. I'm Judy O'Rourke of LabRoots, and I'll be moderating this session. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots, the leading scientific social networking website and provider of virtual events and webinars advancing scientific collaboration and learning. It's brought to you by Beckman Coulter Life Sciences. Beckman Coulter Life Sciences develops, manufactures, and markets products that simplify, automate, and innovate complex pharmaceutical quality control testing. More than 275,000 Beckman Coulter systems operate in both diagnostics and life sciences laboratories on seven continents. For over 75 years, our products have been making a difference in people's lives by improving compliance and reducing cost of ownership. To learn more about Beckman Coulter Life Sciences, please visit www.beckman.com. All right, let's get started. You can pose questions to the speaker during the presentation while they're fresh in your mind. To do so, simply type them into the drop-down box located on the far left of your screen labeled Ask a Question and click on the Send button. Questions will be answered after the presentation. To enlarge the slide window, click on the arrows at the top right-hand corner of the presentation window. If you experience technical problems seeing or hearing the presentation, just click on the support tab found at the top right of the presentation window, or report your problem by typing it into the answer a question box located on the far left of your screen. This is an educational webinar and thus offers free continuing education credits. Please click on the continuing education credits tab located at the top right of the presentation window and follow the process of obtaining your credits. I now present today's speaker, Tony Harrison, a leader in the pharmaceutical manufacturing quality control business for Beckman Coulter. Tony held the convenership of the ISO Working Group revising ISO 14698-1 and 2 for microbial control in clean rooms. He served as the UK subject matter expert to the ISO Working Group that issued the 2015 revised versions of the ISO 14644 and 2 documents for clean room classification at the heart of the aseptic manufacturing chapters of both the European GMP and the USAC GMP documents. Tony holds a bachelor's degree in electrical and electronic engineering and is employed by Beckman Coulter Life Sciences as a senior marketing manager. Experienced in water system total organic carbon, TOC, conductivity and ozone analysis and clean room environmental monitoring, as well as particle characterization, Tony has spent the last 15 years in applied metrology for the pharmaceutical and healthcare manufacturing industries. Prior to that, he worked for companies providing process control automation solutions for manufacturing industries. Tony was joint editor on the ISPE Guide to Ozone Sanitization of Pharmaceutical Water Systems and was also chief editor of the PHSS Best Practice Guide for Clean Room Monitoring. Tony is a well-known international speaker and has provided educational seminars on TOC, liquid particle counting, ozone sanitization for water systems, and clean room monitoring worldwide. Tony Harrison will now begin his presentation. Uh, thank you for that introduction. Hello and welcome to this short presentation today on automating quality control testing in the pharmaceutical quality control department, both to help improve data integrity and also to help reduce costs. Today's presentation will uh, last approximately 20 minutes, plus, of course, the time for the question and answer session at the end. This talk takes a look at four common quality control procedures and how automation can help improve the data integrity by reducing opportunities for human error, whilst also saving time and reducing operating costs. The, the four quality control procedures discussed in this presentation form a common thread in the biopharmaceutical manufacturing industry and are water quality testing, clean room routine environmental monitoring, viable cell counting, and final injectable drug particulate testing. But first, let's take a look at trends in pharmaceutical quality control, data integrity, and also the cost of compliance. A recent report 
published states that 79% of all 483 warning letters issued by the FDA in 2016 cited 21 CFR Part 11 data integrity issues. Now, whilst retraining is a common response to an FDA 483 warning letter, this may only be part of the solution. Was the problem simply that the workers didn't follow the SOP correctly, or was it really that the manual SOPs are simply not robust enough to prevent future recurrences of the problem? Any process that automates the quality control SOP can potentially both reduce the impact of human error on data integrity issues and also bring welcome savings by reducing the time technicians need to devote to carrying out the SOP. Another report suggests that an average pharmaceutical manufacturing facility spends around 40 million euros per year on quality control and associated compliance. Despite encouragement from the FDA in their 2004 Process Analytical Technologies Initiative, many routine quality control test procedures in the pharmaceutical industry remain intensely manual and time consuming. In the spirit of the FDA's PAT initiative, users could consider moving from sole reliance on laboratory-based QC testing to using the online QC instrumentation instead. For example, Many companies have validated online water quality testing instrumentation on their purified water and water for injection loops, but they continue to rely on time-consuming laboratory water quality instrumentation for product release testing. As long as the online instruments can be validated and meet the requirements of the pharmacopoeias, it makes sense to at least reduce the amount of laboratory testing and to rely on data from the online instruments instead. As the online instruments are automated, their use makes the testing more robust by avoiding human error and thus improving data integrity and, at the same time, reducing quality control departmental costs. A study by the Industry Biodevelopment Laboratory showed that a, a, a greater than 20% variability in test results between 16 experienced quality control technicians performing the same manual standard operating procedure. Now clearly the manual SOP could be improved and the technicians retrained, but such variability in results suggests that the manual process itself is not robust enough to deliver the required levels of quality control. Whilst the technical specifications of similar QC instrumentation may appear equivalent, when looking to improve quality control, QC teams should be looking at the level of automation in the instrument to make QC testing more robust and repeatable. For example, a common source of errors in QC testing is sample preparation. So an instrument that automates the sample preparation process can bring enhanced reproducibility and robustness to a QC test. So let's take a look at our first QC test, quality control testing for purified water and water for injection. Total organic carbon and conductivity are two of the four critical quality attributes defined for water for injection and purified water in the pharmacopoeias. Online analyzers such as the PAT 700 from Beckman Coulter can be validated to comply fully for both of these key quality attributes according to the pharmacopoeial requirements. In their guidance, the FDA are keen to emphasize that the 21 CFR Part 11 ruling applies only to the data historian where electronic records are kept. The danger with online instruments with their own local data historian built in is that they could attract the full requirements of the 21 CFR Part 11 ruling. Analyzers such as the PAT 700 avoid this issue by allowing the local data historian to be disabled, thus ensuring that it does not attract the full 21 CFR Part 11 requirements as a data archive for electronic records. Traditionally, data from the online TOC analyzers is stored in validated supervisory control and data acquisition, or SCADA, or distributed control systems. It makes the process control improvements challenging because these systems are validated and adds further significant amounts of change control. More modern approaches keep 
quality critical data records in a separate secure archive, leaving the SCADA and DCS systems dedicated to process control only and far more agile. In support of this, the PAT700 can be configured to automatically send secure PDF electronic records via file transfer protocol over Ethernet for review and batch release, thus satisfying the FDA's ALCOA requirements for electronic records to be accurate, legible, contemporaneously created, original, and attributable. Now, unlike laboratory water quality testing instrumentation, which utilize reagents and require manual configuration for each, for each sample and frequent, often daily, calibration, the online PAT700 from Bettman Coulter requires no reagents. It automates the test protocol and only requires calibration once every 12 months. Calibration and system suitability testing SOPs are automated, requiring no manual data entry and pass-fail reports are automatically generated, eliminating manual calculations. Calibration standards automatically upload their certified value, lot number, and the expiry date to the PAT700 using radio frequency identification, or RFID. Electronic chips are located on the calibration bottles, and these are read by the PAT700 automatically using RFID. Okay. Let's move on to take a look at what can be done to automate routine clean room environmental monitoring programs. Now, of course, GMP documents mandate the air quality conditions for biopharmaceutical production in clean rooms, but in fact, the real danger is the microbes on the human body. Humans shed around 30,000 skin cells per hour, all of which are potential carriers of microbes. Unfortunately, we do not currently have technology to detect airborne microbes real-time, so air particle counters are used as a surrogate. Discussions between the author of this presentation and environmental monitoring managers at facilities across the world highlights an increasing trend where the burden of carrying out environmental monitoring is moving away from the QC microbiology team and over to the production staff for two reasons. Firstly, microbiology staff are relatively expensive to employ to carry out such routine tasks. And secondly, it reduces the number of people inside the clean rooms, thus reducing the potential for product contamination. However, the production team do not have the same level of knowledge about routine environmental monitoring, and this is creating challenges in itself. In larger biopharmaceutical manufacturing plants, there can be teams of 10 or more technicians whose job it is every month to take thousands of routine environmental monitoring samples. The SOPs are manual, and at each sampling location, they have to manually type the location name into the counter before they can start counting. Counters have to be manually configured following written SOPs, and at the end of each day, the paper printouts from each sample location have to be photocopied because the printers in the particle counts are thermal and the printouts fade over time. And then the results from every location have to be manually transferred into electronic format one by one. In an effort to improve data integrity in routine environmental monitoring programs, Beckman Coulter have optimized their MET1 particle counting instrumentation specifically for pharmaceutical QC use, building into the instrument design the capability for pre-configured electronic SOPs, which include the instrument setup and configuration for each location, automatic pass-fail reporting to GMP criteria, and generation of 21 CFR Part 11 electronic records straight from the instrument itself. The user simply selects the electronic SOP that's been pre-configured in the instrument and hits the start button. And the instrument configures itself correctly according to the SOP, carries out the correct test, and produces the electronic, electronic test result record all automatically. This not only improves data integrity, but can reduce costs as technicians no longer have to take time collating the paper records and manually transferring the data into electronic records. Additionally, by collapsing the workflow and de-skilling de the use of air particle counters through automated SOPs, 
This process facilitates moving the responsibility for clean room routine environment, environmental monitoring from qualified microbiologists over to the production staff, further reducing costs. So let's move on to take a look at how viable cell counting can be automated. Cell therapy products in the form of homogeneous cell populations are typically enumerated for concentration and viability based on the cell's ability to exclude a supervital dye such as tripan blue. And traditionally, this is done manually using a microscope and a hemocytometer. But this method can be both time consuming and error prone. Originally designed for counting blood cells, the sample volume used in the hemocytometer method is typically just 100 nanoliters. And small errors using this method caused during the sample dilution, mixing, pipetting, and visual enumeration by the technician in results as the final count result is multiplied up from nanoliters to report cell concentration in viable counts per milliliter. And one study revealed variances in the reported cell concentration results between each member of a team of 16 experienced and knowledgeable technicians using the homocytometer method of up to plus or minus 20% between each technician. In their 2003 guidance on the implementation of their 21 CFR Part 11 Data Integrity Rule, the FDA used the acronym ALCOA, where they define good data integrity practices creating records that are attributable to the technician carrying out the testing, are legible, are created contemporaneously, original, and accurate. The USB Chapter 1046 indicates that automated cell counting and viability instruments can provide a higher degree of precision and a more reproducible enumeration. These improvements are optimal if the sample preparation stage is automated, thus reducing the opportunity of technician errors. Additionally, if the automated cell counter can use electronic pre-programmed cell counting SOP libraries that match the manual SOPs for cell counting designed by the user, then results are more likely to be accurate and reproducible. As well as improving the precision and reproducibility, automated cell counters can reduce the cost of this QC test by allowing the technicians to carry out other tasks while a counter automates the preparation and counting stages for each sample. Counters that can count from a 96 well plate can save significant technician time, helping to reduce QC costs. At the same time, by automating the cell counting SOPs, the method becomes more robust. Creating the electronic record contemporaneously improves data integrity as, as the results are attributable, legible, contemporaneously created, original, and accurate as per the FDA's Alcoa guidance in their 21 CFR Part 11 document. Finally, the last portion for today, uh, let's take a look at the requirements for particulate testing in injectable drug solutions and how these tests can be made more robust. Although largely harmonized, the requirements for parental drug particulate testing do vary from country to country and from product to product. The volume of the sample to be analyzed and the format that results are reported in varies from product to product. For example, the sampling requirements for small volume therapeutic protein products such as vaccines is different for that of a large volume parental such as an intravenous drip bag. Results must be calculated and expressed in the correct format, for example, counts per container or counts per milliliter, depending on the product under test. Now, whilst general purpose liquid particle counting instrumentation can be used for the testing of particles in parenteral products, the Beckman call to HIAC counters have been optimized for the application due to the wide range of complexity in the testing. The various compendial tests are pre-programmed in the HIAC software, and the HIAC will automatically calculate a pass-fail result, avoiding manual calculations. And as the QC teams tend to use their product brand name to describe the product sample under test, the HIAC particle counters allow the user to select the required test for each sample by selecting the product by name from a, or brand name from a drop-down menu. 
The correct compendial test for each product is automatically configured once the brand is selected and there are no manual calculations. So I'd now like to summarize the key points of the presentation. Whilst the industry focuses on errors and omissions in 21 CFR Part 11 electronic records, the underlying issue is that the retraining may only be part of the solution. Manual SOPs are not robust enough to prevent future recurrences of data errors and omissions. QC instrumentation that automate the quality control SOP can potentially both reduce the impact of human error on data integrity and also bring welcome cost savings by reducing the time technicians need to devote to carrying out the SOP. So thank you for your time today. I will now take your questions. Thank you, Tony, for your presentation. A quick reminder for our audience on how to submit questions. Simply type them into the drop-down box located on the far left of your presentation window labeled Ask a Question and click on the Send button. Tony Harrison will answer as many questions as time permits. And the first question is, how can the PAT 700 TOC analyzer from Beckman Coulter be validated to support its use for product release testing? Certainly, certainly. Um, so in the ICHQ2 document, the tripartite uh, committee from the USP, EP, and JP lay down the guidance on how an, analytic, an, an, oh, sorry, <laughs> an analytical method should be validated to demonstrate that it's suitable for its intended purpose. I have a paper on validating the PAT700 TOC analyzer to ICHQ2. I will send it to you. You mentioned electronic records in PDF format are automatically exported from the PAT700 TOC analyzer. Surely PDF files can be changed, so how do you ensure that the electronic record is secure? So there's two main ways in which this is achieved. Firstly, uh, the PAT700 uses Secure File Transfer Protocol, or FTP, which is an industry standard protocol for secure data transfer. And secondly, uh, the PAT700 automatically applies a randomly generated password to the PDF file to prevent it being altered in any way. Looks like we have time for one more question. It is, how does RFID technology prevent manual data entry and calculations on the PAT700? Thank you. So firstly, the, the PAT700 has all SOPs for calibration, system suitability, testing, etc., pre-programmed in electronic format, uh, electronic SOP format. And, and when the user initiates one of these electronic SOPs, the PAT700 700 automatically reads the calibration or system suitability certified values, the lot number, and the expiry date using the RFID tags attached to each calibration standard. As the SOP is electronic and automated, the PAT700 automatically carries out the SOP and calculates a pass-fail result based on the criteria laid down in the pharmacopoeias, and this avoids both manual data entry and manual calculations. Thank you. I would like to once again thank Tony Harrison for his presentation. Do you have any final comments? No, just thank you everybody for attending. Well, thanks again. I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Questions we did not have time for today will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. We would like to thank our sponsor, Beckman Coulter Life Sciences, for underwriting today's educational webcast. This webcast can be viewed on demand through August 21, 2018. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, goodbye.